Hello, humans, and welcome to another episode of Gen X Gamer. That's right. Today, another top 10 list of the Amico community. And who's the guest today? The eyes that see everything. The eyes that are everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce Justy Views. How are you, Justy Views? Hello, humans. <laughs> How you been? How you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Uh, I'm getting ready for the holidays and man, I still need to do some shopping. So let me ask you before we start, because I like doing this all the time, is asking people what they like to play. You know, what was their first video game console? How did you get into gaming? Uh, such a loaded question. Uh, actually, I played the NES. That was my first console ever. And uh, a couple of my favorite games was uh, Codename Viper. Okay. I loved Codename Viper. Also, Yonoid. Even though these two games, I love them so much, I can only pass the first level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I used to have a game, you know, um, Gradius was like that for me. I love playing it, but I, I never beat it when I owned it back in the day. Are you gaming now? Or is there any games that you're playing right now? Uh, I, I do game now. Uh, and that's pretty interesting because what I like to play is actually simple, very fun, you know, games that kind of are my wheelhouse with the Amico. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So because of my kids and because of work, you know, I, I really don't have as much time, even though it might yes. seem like I do with YouTube, but, uh, I really don't. So normally when I game now, it's just a very short, simple game. Yeah, pick up and play, man. I mean, it's uh, for me, it's I, I do a lot of my gaming that way, especially now after being married. I, I don't have a lot of time to spend, but when I do, I want to get a good game. Right now I'm playing The Ghost of Tsushima. That's, you know, when I have a little bit of time, that's that's what I'm playing right now. But let me ask you, how did you get started with the Amico community? How did you start following this whole uh, entertainment fiasco, if you will. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I actually got started with Pat and Ian, of course. Uh-huh. Uh, during that time, we had the uh, humble Hancock Museum going on. <laughs> so, <That guy. laughs> of course, you fall into the rabbit hole of just trying to get to know, you know, your favorite YouTubers a little better. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that time, Afro Gamer Dude was uh, pretty big. Um, which then led me into Darius. So, uh, of course, you know, once you get in, once you start going down the rabbit hole, you just can't get out. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the last thing that I heard from Afro gamer dude was that he got docked somehow. I mean, I wasn't following. I was too busy at the time. I just, uh, you know, all of a sudden I looked and he wasn't there and I really never knew what happened. Yeah. yeah. What what got me out of the Afro gamer dude scene was really the, the containers. He used to have this containers of, and he'll put all his video games in. And I don't know, to me, I just found it pretty weird. So <laughs> af after I saw his uh, container room store, uh, you know, video, I just kind of got out of it. Mm. All right. So then you have a top 10 list for us. You know, everybody's top 10 list is different. Right. And, and uh, the reasons why they it makes their top tens are, you know, different for everybody. I mean, some of it is just funny, but a lot of it, I really like to get into the nitty gritty because there's a lot of discussion around certain points. So let's start off with your number 10. So uh, number 10 in my mm -hmm. big movie voice, uh, my number 10 was actually just watching the roller coaster ride of Smash the AT. Uh, okay. Back then, you know, I, I saw Smash JT first uh, on Spawn Wave. He was in the Spawn Wave crew oh, he as was. a moderator. Yeah. And he actually made, I think, a, like a couple appearances, maybe two or three appearances on their panel. So uh, when I saw Smash first doing his hater video about the Amico, it kept me a little bit interested just because of Pat and Ian at the time. Mm -hmm. um, making their video. So just watching that roller coaster from Smash being, you know, first a hater, then a quote unquote cultist, and then now back to a hater, you know, that it's been kind of a whirlwind that's been an amusement for myself. 
Let me ask you, what did you think about that apology video that he made? Uh, which one? <laughs> <laughs> the last one. You know, the last one where he said, you know, I screwed up. Um, you know, the thing with Smash is that uh, I, I do appreciate somebody always uh, owning up to their mistakes, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, I just wish that with Smash, if he really meant you know, the apology one, apology two, whichever one, you know, I wish he just follow up with what he says. Uh, for instance, the last apology video, he was talking about how Phil gave him a phone call and was going to give us an update on our found Flounders editions mm -hmm. you know, before Thanksgiving and gave him a, a 30 day NDA, quote unquote. Right. Well, Thanksgiving's passed. We haven't received our update yet. We haven't gotten that update video from Smash, and um, you know, I, I guess it's just a a weird community thing for me. But if you really meant, you know, the apology, and really meant, you know, just kind of pushing the Amico agenda during that time that he was in, mm -hmm. um, I wish he come back up with, you know, his follow up video. So. Yeah. The, the reason I asked you, because in, the, in that video, he said, like, why is it that people feel a certain way about me? You know, whether you like them, hate them, whatever. And, um, you know, usually he doesn't get a lot of feedback from from the community. You know, you get people just yelling at him or, you know, just saying X, Y or Z. But, uh, you know, for him to ask why, why, you know, it's it's always best to hear it from from people that have no you know, no agenda. Just say, I, you know, this is the way I feel about this person because of X, Y, or Z, you know, and that, yeah, that just exactly. al always, it clears it up because you'll have people just saying, you know, I just don't like them. <laughs> you know yep. what I'm I just, I just don't like the guy. And <laughs> you right. know, I, I, I feel like if he had, if he really was seeking that type of information from people who are, you know, on the other side or whatever, you know, they, he'll actually listen, but, um, the thing with Smash, to me at least, is that he reacts so fast to things that he just goes out of his way and just blocks people, you know? And um, sometimes you are you might be blocking the wrong person, you know? Uh, I My thing is with that is, you know, I always like to hear what the other, you know, people who, you know, have a different opinion from me might have to say about it. You know, but if you're really looking for that kind of information, then then you'll get it. Um, yeah, probably with him. He's just, you know, I mean, we're all human, but I mean, so you can only take so many insults. Right. And then at yeah. some point you think everybody's trying to insult you. Everybody that disagrees is, you know, trying to insult you. So, you know, I don't want to speak for him, but I just think it's it's good for him to hear from from the community, you know, whatever. The, Especially the if you're is. asking for it, you know. Yeah. So yeah. that's just my Definitely. opinion. Yep. All right. And your number nine. So my number nine is, sorry, I have to go back to my list. My phone closed out. Okay. The Amico Club. So my number nine being the Amico Club because, you know, during the, the thick of the Amico, we were told how these games are, you know, not meant to be played on any other device, any other console. That's right. Yet. I'm able to play Moon Patrol still today in 2022. And yes, I still do play Moon Patrol from time to time on my mobile device. So I just think it's kind of funny that, you know, for all these games that are exclusive. And yes, I have a Flounders pre-ordered mm -hmm. <laughs> that I can play Fox and Forest on a Switch, that I can play Moon Patrol on my mobile device. I can play Evil Knievel, you know, if, you know, when you could on your mobile device, but they're exclusive games. So I always found that kind of comical that uh, the Amico club was there for me to play moon patrol. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, a lot of things with Tommy, you know, and I've always pointed this out is, is the PR, right? When you have a PR team, everything that comes out of your mouth is vetted. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter what it is, right. You only say certain things. So you can say, well, there's going to be content that's only going to be exclusive in the Amico, right? But it, but any of these games that you looked at, you could see that you could play it any other way. You know, what I'm saying you can uh, 
put it on Switch, put it on the Xbox. You could play it many other ways. And for him to say that, and it's so obvious that you can, and then you put out this this game on a cell phone, like you say, really cuts his argument down. And it's just another point for people to make fun of him and say, yeah, it just doesn't even make sense. But that was what made him <laughs> so enjoyable to watch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, the- <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, your next one is probably one of my <laughs> one of my favorites. <laughs> oh man, let me tell you, I I am a very very even keel type of person. A lot of things really don't get to me. Uh-huh. But man, when I saw my number eight, which is the John Riggs top five reasons, <laughs> wow, did that trigger me? <laughs> 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 you know that was that was during a time uh, when. You know, I think everybody was kind of figuring out really what's going on with mm-hmm. the television, with the Amico. You know, we kind of had, you know, a little bit of a feeling on, you know, what side to pick, which is ridiculous. But, you know, what side to pick. And then here comes John Riggs with his beautiful top five reasons. <laughs> and and I clicked on that, of course, you know, getting tricked into the clickbait of wow big youtubers uh, another big youtuber is going to go out against tommy and uh that i mean you can't talk about a more cringy video than than that john riggs video yeah and you know what he doesn't he doesn't i've interacted with him a couple of times on twitter he doesn't like it when you when you remind him that he was shilling for the amico and he was just like, I was, I was just playing with my friends and we had a great time. And, you know, it went beyond that, you know, because, you know, these guys, the Metal Jesus group played it, but only it was him and John. Uh, yeah, it was Riggs and John Hancock that were talking about it. Yeah. But the one that was really shilling, the one that was the one that to this day is on on the video on their investment tab is John Riggs. Right. Yep. And. What I, what I told people, and I keep reminding them. I mean, John Riggs is something that a lot of these YouTubers aspire to be, right? They they want to have that kind of subscription base and that kind of attention. And even this guy that's been around that that's, has worked, you know, all these shows and done all these things, got himself into a situation where even though he doesn't now agree with a product or I'm sure anything that's going on with the investment stuff, is out there as the face. Uh, the first face that investors see when they click on that tab, because you can still invest in the Amico, Amico that's still there. Yep. Um, and he can't get out of it. You can't get out of it. You already said, okay, to whatever. And um, you know, your face is there. And if this thing goes South <laughs> and, and you know, there's nobody to man the, the offices anymore. And that website just stays on for eternity. There you are shilling for life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Did you do you remember when uh, Metal Jesus came out about the uh, the Amico? He said that he signed an NDA, and he can't talk about the Amiga. <laughs> no, I don't remember that part. No, yeah. is that what he said? Yeah, there's a video out there that uh, that has Metal Jesus talking about that. Oh man, it, it's back in 2018. Uh, right after the Portland Expo, where he brings <laughs> that up, and then oh, of course man. you know that here comes Hancock and Riggs, you know, uh, coming up talking about the Amico. Yeah. I, I feel I feel like John Riggs really uh, really helped a lot of people on the quote unquote cultist side to have you know that much more confidence because he was that big YouTuber. Yeah. Even though there's that video of uh, Tommy talking about how he he just signed this big YouTuber who's going to help promote the Amico, <laughs> and then here comes OEB Pete's face looking so disappointed <laughs> because it's not him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they. I mean, they, they grew him. They promised that they grew him, and they finally did until he did the 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 other stuff. But yeah, I mean it, that that whole. If I knew there was something wrong with Metal Jesus didn't jump in because Metal Jesus, you know, if he's getting paid, he'll do stuff, right? Oh, yeah. So at, at that point, I knew that as excited as Tommy was or whatever, he hadn't paid Metal Jesus. 
right? He didn't have Metal Jesus money to, to splurge. So he was doing all this big talk, but you would think that if he had, you know, sample models or what have you, he would give one to to each of the Metal Jesus crew or, you know, whoever is the biggest one in there and have them play every week and pay them, you know, per stream or something, you know, and promote the product that way. I, but, I think at that time as well, um, mm -hmm. Metal Jesus just did the Poly Mega video and he got a lot of heat from that video. So that could that could also attribute to why he didn't push it. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm going to find that that I'm, I'm going to clip it. Uh, Metal Jesus talking about him signing an NDA and how he can't talk about the Amiga, but he he put his hands on it. <laughs> yeah, it's just it, remarkable. Yeah, I mean, you just wonder how much he charges. You know, according to remember the last gamer, the last gamer said that uh, what is it? He tried to charge him like thirty five hundred bucks or something like that to promote yep. his channel. Yep. So you can imagine what he's asking businesses to to do, right? And and you know he's got the right to do it. I mean, if if they pay, they pay as long as he discloses. It is what it is. But that tells me that you know, in television, didn't <laughs> didn't want to pay the money. It was that was a, that was a pretty funny email that that leaked out there about Metal Jesus, wasn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, and it was so telling, <laughs> you know. And and the thing is. Probably the 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 part that I feel sad about is that the last gamer, like he's a he's a real guy, he's a real collector, right? He's a yep. real game hoarder, and YouTube doesn't reward that. It they reward the metal Jesus, the the fake John Hancock. Remember John Hancock was getting jealous, yeah, about the, <laughs> the shine he was getting. You know, the last gamer was getting, and he goes, "Well, yep. you know, it's easy when you have that kind of money and you're rich." And he's not. This guy, you know, he he works. Yeah, he actually works. He, you know, he owned a business and that's how he got a lot of the games. But this guy's a family man that works. So he was trying to put him in a different light when he was getting all salty about not being the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy's still running his his uh, virtual museum. <laughs> OK, <laughs> uh, number seven. My number seven is the Amicos that I made along the way. Uh, this has actually been one of my favorite parts about the whole Amico saga, you know, from finding, like I mentioned, you know, I was watching uh, Pat and Ian, you know, back then I was watching a bunch of big YouTubers mm -hmm. uh, that, that, you know, they lost their creativity a long time ago. And, you know, from Pat and Ian, Game Chasers, you know, all those guys. Mm -hmm. So being able to, to find, a bunch of the smaller, more creative uh, channels out there, like you know yourself, Gen X, uh, like Evil Knievel, like Darius. Uh, Darius has made a big impact in the community uh, just by helping some of us, you know, make, you know, even though it might seem low production, and just turning on a camera and talking, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's the the points and the ideas and things like that that come out of it, you know. It's very entertaining uh smaller guys if it's okay if i just run off with it yeah, like yeah. uh d reed and potion sword run you know my guys like e king that i miss so much and extra sanderson and also my last one like leo ds who's my hidden gem you know um uh, the amico has definitely helped make a lot more amicos along the way so i'm very thankful for that yeah definitely definitely let me ask you what what do you think that contributes to these uh, channels decline once they get bigger? Do you think it, it's the money? Do they just get burnt out? What what do you think uh, leads to that decline in, in content that we see? Because you see a lot of guys just phone it in after a while. They they're yeah. just not engaged. Uh, it's the constant pressure. I feel like of you know, I, YouTube has definitely changed. You know. For me, my opinion with YouTube is, you know, back then, you know, 2013 uh, with gaming, you know, 2013 or 20, like 16, 17, around there. That's when YouTube really pushed along a lot of these smaller guys and, and just blew them up, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of these people, uh, like Dreamcast guy, who's made videos saying how his lifelong dream has to, to be a you know, YouTube gaming channel. Uh, you know, you got guys like that that mm -hmm. 
they just feel that constant pressure of, you know, making their com- content about we need to talk or, you know, oh, changes in the channel, things like that, yeah. that they just can't back off. You know, they have to keep going and push and pushing that al- algorithm for YouTube. Um, that, I, that's how I feel is what's going on. You know, yeah, I mean, in, you know, you, you even see it in, in smaller channels, you know, like uh, uh, I'll give you a perfect example. When I started watching who did I, Brett Weiss, I watched Brett Weiss early on. Right. <laughs> and yeah. then once he started getting close to getting monetized, he just turned into this. This pushy salesman. Guys, you got to subscribe. You got to subscribe because I need I need to get monetized. I need and I'm, I'm thinking, dude, what are you going to get? 30 bucks? I mean, is it, yeah, exactly. I mean, is it worth ruining the show over $30? You know, and then he just kept on, you know, pumping it. The last episode that I watched of him, he was asking for Patriot, not, Patreon, not only for him, but for his son. And I was like, what, what the hell is this crap? <laughs> and Jesus Christ, get a job, get a part-time job, you know, like the rest yeah. of the country. All right. What is your number six? Number six is bringing the communities together. While tearing your families apart. <laughs> oh, man. That's, that's actually very good. <laughs> the oh, Amigo man. has definitely brought me together with my community. While, while me having a three and one year old. Giving oh, man. Less and less in attention. <laughs> Dad of the year. <laughs> yeah oh man. oh man i mean i just can't honestly you know it's 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 pretty crazy uh-huh. uh the tommy came in at a perfect time of everybody's lives in my opinion yes. you know with everything going on in the world uh with how youtube was kind of getting into like in the gaming space right it was kind of getting into like a very stale area you know, where everybody's kind of just focusing on the same thing, mm-hmm. which was our lovely, humble Hancock Museum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that, that is such a bad idea. I mean, it's just like the worst <laughs> idea ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, it came it came at a great time. Uh, but it's kind of funny, you know, I got closer to a lot of guys. You know, back then I, I was just another viewer. Uh, mm-hmm. pun intended and um you know the amico made me come out quote unquote <laughs> uh <laughs> where i'm commenting you know and and now i'm actually making crazy content uh i contribute that to the amico bringing me closer to my community so that's my number six absolutely you know i i tell people i'm i'm thankful for the amico you know you, i you know i'm against the shitty business practices you know <laughs> Yeah. But but I'm for the wood grain. <laughs> so <laughs> but the passion that I brought out in everyone, right, was was great. Number one. Number two, it brought out a lot of people where I was just looking at the screen going, is this guy for real? Like, is is this a setup? This is this a show? Is it? No, these that's actually what he thinks. Holy shit. And uh, then, you, of course, you have to make videos to respond. Right. Exactly. Because they, they get because you're passionate about something doesn't mean you, you know something like I'm really, you know, passionate about video games. But that doesn't mean I can program. Right. Yep. And these guys, because they're passionate about the Amico, think they're experts in areas that they have no business, uh, you know, <laughs> at all advising people on what to do. So, I mean, that's really where I came in, but, but, uh, man, what, yeah, it was at the right time. Like you say, specifically yeah, right at, at the right time. All right, let's go to the next one. So my number five is the outbreak of creativity. Uh, um, I think it's a Miko Wolf. There's a channel called a Miko Wolf and they mm-hmm. made a video about how Tommy Tallarico was, saying how these people are haters and they're trolls and they have no life and they have no business, you know, talking about whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and in that video, uh, they, they talk about how the Amico has brought so much creativity out of people who have no business creating content. 
you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before 2018, you watch YouTube, and it's mostly all these guys that have background in editing. They have background in, you know, going to school for for theater or for television or for whatever. Mm-hmm. All these YouTubers are like that. You watch YouTube now, and it's, you know, we got our Darius Truxtons. You got myself, who I don't, I don't really make content like that, but mm-hmm. I have absolutely no business making videos, you know. And uh, it it brought out a lot of good in people. Yeah, it did bring out some, you know, bad, and you know, people want to say I'm a troll or whatever, but mm-hmm. it it brought that out as well. But man, the the onslaught of creativity from people that have no business messing around with this is been very awesome you know yeah it is because for a long time it was pre-packaged right and even now you see people trying to make channels and sure they'll get to a thousand viewers you know whatever very quick right but when you take a look at them are you doing anything different than anybody else i mean you're doing the same thing as x y or z person right and they're already huge so at some point you're going to get lost I'd rather watch somebody somebody that just turned on a camera and just is going to go raw and tell me <laughs> <laughs> whatever is flowing. Whether it's wrong or right, they don't care. They don't have an agenda, right? They, like their uh, primary goal is not to become the next metal Jesus. Exactly. Right? Their, their yep. goal is to just give you what's on their mind, right? And, and that's what really makes it entertaining. Exactly. And, like you say, maybe they, they don't have – any business, you know, making videos as far as editing or anything else, but the content they create is a lot better than the cookie cutter crap that we see all the time. Somebody streaming, talking about the game, you know, I mean, there's only so much we can learn about Castlevania after there's (laughs) like a million freaking videos, right? You're not going to tell me anything new. You know, I've seen the playthroughs. So what else is there? And I think that it filled that need specifically in the pandemic because during the pandemic, you had all this downtime. I mean, I didn't because I had to work every day. But you had a lot of people that had a lot of downtime. And they were searching for different kind of content. And they got it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and to me, you know, there's there's just a, a beauty of mm-hmm. just listening to somebody that's like-minded. You know, even if they're like-minded and they don't share the same opinion. Mm-hmm. To me, there's something beautiful about that. You know, and it's not just that same old, like you mentioned, cookie cutter. Tell me about Castlevania. Tell me about how Super Mario 2 is not the actual Super Mario 2. Like, there's only so much of that I can take. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we all have that same common ground, which is we, we all have a passion of, of, of video games. You know? Yeah. So, to me, I always found... It doesn't matter if you like their opinion or not, but to me, I always found that to be something of uh, of art, you know? Yeah, absolutely Uh, entertaining. Yep. Uh, My number four uh, has been the comment section. I feel like (laughs) in television, Amigo has brought out the best and worst of us in the comment section. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I can tell you personally, there's been some where somebody was roasting me that was so good, like the like the the what they were saying about me was so on point. The criticism probably I didn't agree with, but what they said was so fucking funny. I had to laugh. I was like, oh my god, this is really fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> like I was proud of that roast, you know. I but you're say, right, Gen X. You have you have a very neutral, safe space channel, right? You have also one of the best comment sections you can find out there on YouTube. You can get somebody that's extremely positive and extremely negative about the same topic, and the comments that come out of that are just laugh out loud funny. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that that's what, you know, one of the reasons I don't like, you know, banning anyone, you know, unless they're actually doxing, you know, what I tell people is try to be creative. You can say whatever you want to say without cursing or cussing because yep. it really leads to better conversations. If, if, if I was to ban somebody uh, that is, for example, completely positive about Amico, 
then it would be completely boring. We're all just talking about the same thing. If everybody agreed about everything, there is no conversation, right? You're just in, a, in this bubble, which happens, you know, to a lot of shows. But when you have somebody come in and say, you know, Tommy Tallarico is the best thing since sliced bread. Oh, you can get a conversation going. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> right. That That's for sure. And, um, you know, my purpose for that is so future people that want to invest in this company, because they will ask for money, can get to see a, just a, an honest conversation. Because, I mean, a, 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 somebody that's going to invest is not going to go to a channel where people are just calling each other, you know, the worst of names because yeah. because of a video game. You know, I mean, they're just not going to go there. But yep. if they're able to see two people discussing a subject, whether or not this is a good investment, they, we might be able to save some. I mean, when when the first round of investments happened, you know, I think I had like three some 300 subscribers, something like that. Some people listened to me, you know, but it wasn't the investors. You know, I try to break it down. I was just doing basic math. The numbers don't add up. Right. I'm, yep. I'm for the I'm for the concept. I'm for the console. But telling that people that they're going to make 10 times their money if you sell this many units. Is never going to add up, not not in this planet, not in this universe. Never. Right. It's it doesn't make sense. This is this can't nobody can factually believe this and, and have it come out of their mouths, especially <laughs> if you work at the company. Right. Yeah. Um. But at that point, everybody was so excited. Nobody cared. You had everybody saying, this is great. This is going to happen. Invest. It's an next thing. And, you know, the consequences now. <laughs> exactly. But, all right. And then the next one. <laughs> My number three top 10 Amico moment yes. has been enjoying the ride of Turbo Joe versus Darius Truxton and my magnificent emails. Man, I need another email from Phil Adam really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of these skateboard videos, man. <laughs> yeah, we definitely need more more Turbo <laughs> Joe, you know, and and I was criticized back in the day because I didn't I didn't uh I didn't criticize Turbo Joe, right? Um and but this is just, you know, I gave my reason back then and that and that is because he served, right? He served yep. and and I have uh, family members that have served and, you know, and I wouldn't and I don't even know if it's true, but let's say he does have, you know, whatever stress issues or whatever because of his service. I, I would just never do that. I, it wouldn't feel right for me. I'm not saying that he's beyond criticism. I just don't feel comfortable doing it because I respect his service. But I do enjoy watching his his rants and his interpretation of the emails where we're reading the same fucking thing. <laughs> And I'm like, that's not <laughs> what it said. <laughs> you know, that's not what it says, you know, and the, and the, and the back and forth is so animated, you know, <laughs> oh, man, because he can he can hold forth, his own too. the back and forth between Darius and Turbo was just classic. It was just classic moments. <laughs> and yes. uh, I do have to give credit to Turbo Joe because before Turbo Joe. I was just a viewer mm -hmm. and he made, I, I do not remember which video he made. It had to have been an email video where mm -hmm. he was proclaiming that it was coming out in December of 2021. Yes. yes. And I don't know what happened, but I was like, you know what? I got to go in this comment section <laughs> and start writing something. <laughs> so yeah. Turbo, you have gave the birth to, to Justy views. And I just want to, and I thank you for that. <laughs> see i mean something good comes out of these conversations especially when you don't agree with somebody if you remember that email they and this is how i knew they were in trouble they put that email out on a it was friday midnight so it's actually saturday midnight yeah right to try to bury the bad news <laughs> that's not something you do right that that's not something you do when you did something right that's what companies do when they slip up, when there's PR problems, they want to bury that story over the weekend. And you're hoping that something worse happens over the weekend or Monday. Exactly. So people are talking about that and not the fact that you just screwed the pooch again. But that's at that point, they, they, they were dead. They were really dead. 
Oh, the next one is is one of my favorites for sure. Oh, man. And this was definitely one of my favorites as well. Uh, my number two best Amico moment during the Amico saga, which hopefully never dies, and I want this person to come back, is my sweet, sweet OEB Pete Mondays. <laughs> the glory of the arm swing, I tell you. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best day of the week by far. Even though yes. I hated it, so waking up that morning and start my you know work week. Oh man, I look forward to my sweet arm swing, getting <laughs> all my amico updates through my OEB Pete Mondays. It yes. was it was really must watch. <laughs> yes, during, absolutely. During yeah, I mean, I man, I, I'm telling you that that those were the best of times back then. Because you would have the OEB Pete, you know, Monday with the reaction of everything that, that Pete was saying. And, uh, you know, Pete really believed that stuff, right? But, like, Pete wasn't joking. He was, like, you know, whatever in television was telling him, whatever Ptolemy was telling him, he was taking it as fact. <laughs> uh, and I didn't think that at, at first, you know, I, I didn't think that at first. The time I knew... And I'm trying to find this clip. So if you ever see it, please let me know. The time I knew, and I even made a video about this when I saw it because it impacted me so much. When I saw OEB Pete brokenhearted because they had failed them when they did. I, and I believe it was right after that letter. And if, I, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, after that midnight letter where, where they just didn't. Right. Because he was talking even back in August. He was saying, don't let us know at the last minute that you're not going to do this. Yes. You know? <laughs> And then when they didn't do that, he was just looking into the camera. And, and if he can even <laughs> consider, if he could even imagine an angry OEB Pete, but he was, <laughs> you know, angry and heartbroken and saying, like, if you're going to, if you say something, you need to do it. Right. Yep. And then, and then after that, shortly after that, he started deleting videos and stuff like that. But yeah, that's, that's when I knew where like, oh man, this is. This is not going to go well, you know. I I hope, I hope he doesn't stop making videos. But he, then he stopped, you know, and then and then he left. And if you lose Pete as a fan, you really screwed the pooch because Pete likes everything. Yes, right? you really have to break Pete's heart for him not to support your product, right? Like you you really had to like let him down and whatever whatever the heck you told him, he felt that you lied to him. And that's why yep. he left. Yeah, yeah. That was, but those were the best times, man. That Monday. Oh, man. Oh, man. I awesome. mean, that that was a, you know, when, oh, get, <laughs> get him ready. <laughs> get him ready. Because everybody reacted, you know, you had uh, Darius and everybody else after that reacting. Oh, man. Oh, I, man. You know what? I used to like reverse watch OEBP, where I will first watch the sweet arm swing. You know, want, get all my reaction videos in first, <laughs> and then go watch an OEBP episode. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Um, I rem, uh, you know, I remember a couple of times. You know, with my girlfriend, she's like, I wanted it at that point. She wasn't my wife; she was my girlfriend. Saying, "Oh, we got to watch this movie," like, <laughs> and in the background, <laughs> I had. I only had one on one side, so she wouldn't see that on the other side. You know, I was listening to, to whatever. I'd be listening to OEB Pete or something else because you know I'm <laughs> not a huge fan of rom coms and stuff like that, or you know whatever movie she wanted to watch. But yeah, man, that those uh, those are great days. They they really really were, man. I, I miss them. Let me tell you, I I do miss them. I remember uh, one of his last videos was. Mm -hmm. uh, he to do his countdown i'm not sure if you remember oeb pete's countdowns yes where he was counting down the polymega <laughs> he was counting down the vcs and he was counting down the amico and one of his last countdown videos he was giving us the negatives of intellivision amico oh man and and oh man i watched that and i was just amazed because even back then, he was trying so hard to keep the faith. And you can just tell that he was just broken about it. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, yeah. 
my OABP Mondays, that it, it was truly one of the best moments of the entire Amika saga. <laughs> well, the only the only wood grain I have is the Atari VCS, let me tell you. If you would have asked me back then when this whole thing started, uh, who was going to come out first, especially the way Tommy was talking, I was like, it's going to be the Amico's going to come out first by far, yeah. right? Because Atari was having all those problems. I Even Smash JT was criticizing them, I exactly. believe, back then. And they showed up with, with something at a show or something that wasn't all there, but... Let me tell you, Atari came through, man. Atari came through. I have my wood grain Atari, and I love that machine. I, you know, I I just love this joystick. You know, the yep. only reason I bought the machine is for this and to play games with this, like I used to when I was a kid. And yeah, I'm a sucker for nostalgia, man. But that's what made me dive deeper with Smash was mm-hmm. because he made that VCS uh, video about how it wasn't going to come out, how he hated the whole thing about it how he felt like it was a scam and then yeah. the very i think it had to have been like the next one that he made the next upload or or like the one right after that where he's talking about in television and how he smells the same signs as the vcs <laughs> <laughs> yes i remember i remember that that he was trying to get in with with the VCS team and they basically told him to go pound sand like yeah you know, <laughs> and and he wasn't very appreciative so I think that when Tommy reached out to him uh you know that would have been one of the catalysts for him going so hard on this thing you know trying to he's trying to grow his channel that at that point too yeah and and you know just trying to break out as a big YouTuber uh like you said he tried at Spawn Wave and I don't know what happened there but those guys just never seemed to like them. You know, I just I always no. got that impression. Like they did just didn't like this guy for whatever reason. But hopefully, here we come. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't take down that video. Cause you know, once you highlight an old smash video, he likes to take it down. But there oh. is a old smash <laughs> video of him driving in the car mm-hmm. talking about spawn wave. Oh, and, really? Uh, yeah, there is. Um, that I, you know, I've, I've been watching some of these guys for a long time, so it might be yeah. pretty pathetic. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, he's closer to, to their age. You know, when you talk about the old man cringe community, I mean, I see some guys that are like, they don't realize the age that we are, you know, as and you know, you're still a young dad. But what happens 20 years from now for you, you're going to feel the same. You just look older. Right. <laughs> yeah. So even though you feel the same people are going to treat you like they treat your your dad or your granddad right now, right? Exactly. Um, but in your mind, you're still the same. Like, you don't, you're not going to stop liking whatever video game you like right now. You know, 20 years from now, you still like it, right? And you still have some of the same opinions. But the way that people react to you is different. You know, and YouTube and, and media and, and, and uh, a lot of these uh, circles – even the retro ones are mostly for younger people. They're not, for, there's small enclaves or older folks, but there's less and less of us every year. That's just a fact of life. You know, yep. and a lot of, a lot of guys have a hard time dealing with the fact they're no, they're not cool anymore. Right. You're just not cool. I was cool in high school. Right. I was cool in my twenties, but once my kids got to be like 12 or 13, I wasn't cool anymore. <laughs> <laughs> forever right like forever like if i liked a song and my kids like a song they would stop listening to it because that song was lame <laughs> all right and here's uh man we're down to the last one yep so back right. in 2018 uh-huh. uh i i just proposed to my wife at that time i had no nice. kids i was just all up into, you know, my line of work. Uh, I was working, you know, 10, 12, 13, 14 hour day, long, long days for me. Nice. And I was kind of getting out of gaming and here mm-hmm. comes a beautiful presentation that I saw. And uh, it was telling me how I can reconnect with my loved ones, play video games again, you know, with my mom who's still alive, my dad mm-hmm. who's still alive. And, how I can bowl that bitch with, you know, my loved ones and stuff. And and back in 2018, the number one in television Amico moment, which I, I, I wish he just come back 
is Tommy Tellerico. He's been the gift that just keeps on giving. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Yep. I mean, his legacy still lives on, even though he's he's not anywhere. <laughs> I predicate I mean, everything I do to Tommy Tellerico now because <laughs> just because of <laughs> the gift that of Tommy that he is, you know. It, it's just so funny. Um, from all the takes that he gave us during the Amico saga, you even go back and you just watch some of his old interviews and his old takes, and you're like, "Wow, man how how did <laughs> how did this slip under the cracks?" You know, prior to 2018. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but look, it, in fairness, it, it could happen at because back then, like nobody had gone into the weeds, right? Um, exactly. You just you just felt it out of the guy sometimes like you, maybe he's just a little too full of himself, but being conceited is not a crime. Right. And, and, and when he first came out, remember he wasn't asking for money. He was just no. saying, I'm, I'm spending my own money to do this stuff. So, uh, you know, even my, in my beginning videos, like my very first video is a positive in television video. And at that point I was like, Hey, this guy's using his own money. He's saying everything with his chest. You don't like it. You don't like it. That's fine. But if I had to side with somebody, I would side with this guy. He's putting his money where where his mouth is. Exactly. I saw no problem, even if you thought that the the console was weird, if the game sucked, whatever your opinion was, it's his money to burn, and he doesn't owe anything to anybody. That changed as soon as he put his hand out, right? Once you put your hand out, the rules of the game change. But when he first came out with that retro reimagined, for me, that was the hook. Yeah. Right? <laughs> for me, that was the hook. I, I played the Intellivision. I always wanted Intellivision. I never had one because the Intellivision was the PlayStation 5 of my day. It was more expensive, right? Yep. Uh, just just to, to give you an example, that the cartridges for the Intellivision back in the day would have been about $135 today in today's money. That's how expensive the Intellivision was to own. And, you know, I was at a pool party where my friend had an Intellivision and a bunch of games, dude, and I was just playing. And it turned out to be like just an amazing party afterwards, like a, just like a rocking party. So like the first time I ever binged playing the Intellivision, I hooked up, you know, and I played in television. It was just a great time at a pool party. So life didn't get any better you know, for, I think I was 15 at the time, life did not get any, any better than that. So that's why I had a connection with the machine. But then, then it got entertaining. <laughs> then Tommy started putting on his show. <laughs> oh yeah. And, and it was a glorious show at that. Yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> I want to um, ask you something. Uh-huh. What, what was your, what the hell moment with Tommy? For me, it was Tommy in the comment section. <laughs> the way that he just went in the comment section and just didn't, you know, care at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I always found that to be like, what the hell is this, man? You know, coming from a, a CEO trying to, you know, get everybody going and excited. You know, and, and trying to move the console forward. I always found it remarkable how he just went into the comment section. Uh, I didn't have Twitter at the time, but, you know, mm-hmm. you'll get what he's saying on Twitter, you know, on, on a YouTube video or whatever. Uh, but to me, that was the what the hell moment for me. You know, for, for me, it wasn't that because I've been, you know, I've been part of organizations where the owner is just a loose cannon. Do you follow football football at all? Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. So I'm a Cowboys fan. And at that point I saw, I saw Tommy Tallarico as Jerry Jones, right? He's the owner. And because he's the owner, he runs around like a bull in a China shop, just saying whatever the hell he wants. And then the employees have to deal with, with the bullshit that's going on. Yep. But at that point I had the impression that there were capable people running the show in the background. Right. And because of the work that I do, um, when they sent that unit overseas to uh, where was it the the UE or something like that I can't remember it was in the Middle East somewhere they sent that unit uh-huh. right? that wasn't updated that had problems and they shipped it out like that that's when I knew this company was not what it seemed 
right? <laughs> because if you're, you know, if you're if you're brand new, if you're a brand new company, first impressions are everything, right? So you have to be even better than what's established there, right? So if you're gonna if you're gonna make a presentation of something, you have to make sure it's tits. You have to make sure that that thing is absolutely one hundred percent. So what this told me is somebody shipped out this console, didn't double check it at all, right? So they either don't know what the hell they're doing, right? Number one. Number two, that's the extent of their capability, right? That's yeah. their bandwidth. This is the best they can do. <laughs> and either of those things are bad news when people already gave you money. Like exactly. that. That is that for me was was it. That's when I knew a lot of this was smoke and mirrors. Can you imagine going into a Walmart and buying an attachment for your phone to play the Amico? Like to <laughs> me, when he said that, I was I, I I've always wondered how the hell would that work? You know, yeah. uh, I mean, just a lot of the things that he you know he said and promised afterwards. I always just found it on the funny side than anything else. So I, that's why I always just laugh whenever, you know, I'll make a comment and somebody just, you know, just attacks me about how dumb I am or whatever. It's just all very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish it never ends. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, if they can push it, I mean, I, if I can get another four years, I don't <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I think I, I think even for the most devout of fans, 2023 is a year. But I mean, they don't need that much money to get our founders out. No. They don't. And but I thought twenty twenty two was the year. <laughs> yeah, that, that's until twenty twenty three. Yeah, uh, you know, maybe they'll have an announcement for Christmas. Exactly. I mean, John John Alvarado hinted that he had some news that he couldn't talk about. Yep. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, get ready for the pregame. It's going to be interesting this week. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you so much, Justy, for coming in and sharing your top 10 list with us. We look forward to seeing you on the YouTubes and in the comment sections and on the live chats whenever you're there. I wish I had more time to do that kind of stuff, but oh, my time is going to be short. <laughs> no, I, and thank you for the opportunity, Gen X. It was it is a great honor. Uh, thank you. Thank this. you. And congratulations as well again. Hey, thank you so much. Merry Christmas and, you know, have a blessed holiday with you and your family. Thank you. All right. Take care. Have a great one. You too. Thanks, guys.